Hello everybody, we are back with the Spin TV coverage of the 2021 European Disc Golf Championship in Czech Republic. I'm joined here with Simon Lizard, the reigning Disc Golf European Champion. How are you, Simon? Doing fantastic. It's a great feeling to be back in Europe and it's a treat to get to play this castle course and yeah, I can't wait to see the action go down here. It's 26 nations representing and man it's a good vibe yeah lots of european disc golf to come on spin tv so please subscribe like all the videos there is a next day coverage from all four rounds what do we have today we have knut wall and holland from norway representing team innova we have jakub semerad from czech republic team latitude obviously reigning champion simon on this card representing team disc mania and one of your friends, Christian Plaue from Germany. Yeah, Christian and I have been playing for many, many years, probably early 2000s. And I was super stoked to have a German teammate on us. Hole one. This is the downhill hole, which is pretty much the one of the only holes, along with the hole 17, that you can go OP. What are you thinking on this hole? Yeah, this is, I mean, we're playing a UC Marisma design. Um, it's a typical hole one start. The nerves are real. And it's a downhill shot. It almost plays like an island hole, but of course it's not. But you can go OB on the left side the whole way. And this is a touchy putter to mid-range shot. And as a whole one, especially here at European Championships, I know all these guys, including myself, are going to feel it. Okay, first off the tee is a Knut. He's actually a re very recent third-place finisher at the Norwegian Championship. A low shot, safe shot, no, no worries there. Yeah, I've played with Knut a couple times before, probably USTGC. I've played with him, I think. And yeah, he has a great potential and he loves the game. Jakub Semerad is actually the reigning Central European champion and he's the highest rated player in Czech Republic currently with a rating of 1011. So it will be very nice to see the, this new young talent. Disc Golf International is definitely... It's, that's what it needs to be, and it's so cool to be back here. And this is my first time playing with Jakub. And I was stoked, of course, to have a local on the card and watch his talent. Okay, that needs to slow down. Yeah, it was a putter, so you saw the skip wasn't that big. Yeah. So he's safe. He, I bet he's super stoked with that first shot to be barely in bounds. It gets, that green can get real fast. Representing Germany from Bremen. Representing Team Dismania. <laughs> what is that face? <laughs> I was just like, that is a very long intro. Can I just throw, please? <laughs> I was already like trying to calm myself down and just relax, and then okay. I just he just kept talking. And oh, yeah. yeah, the goal is here just to keep it low, try to hug the right side of the trees. That's and a mid range, right? Yeah, I threw this is an MD4, and I that's did. I forgot the the low part, so that's what happens. A bit too. I want to call it a bit fluffy. Mm -hmm. And it just skips out. It's out by like three feet. And that's automatic bogey, right? The drop zone does not play very friendly. You don't even get a chance really to make it. It's another layup shot from... Are we talking today meters or feet? Meters. We're talking in meters. So that's probably like a 50 meter downhill approach. Mm -hmm. Christian has the sidearm play here, right? That's actually pretty popular. Yeah, Christian is known in Germany for a strong forehand game. And he was telling me before the round that he is very excited and <laughs> a bit nervous. But yeah. uh, no, he hung this out nice and wide. It's kind of tough to get it wide enough. But if you're in those trees there, that's... That's a pretty good kick. It's a good shot. It's a potential putt. And if not, it's at worst case, it's a three. Okay, now you can see actually the drop zone. So it's pretty far away. So this is not a gimme, right? No, this is, especially as hole one, as, as always. <laughs> you. That's a bit wide. But yeah, it's sliding in, yeah. It's a tricky, tricky shot, but I, I managed to get this one real close. Yeah, well, you can't win the tournament on hole one, but <laughs> you can basically get a lot of shots from the others if you make OB. But this is uh, C2, pretty deep in the, the circle two. Actually, outside circle two. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is the dream start for Knut. He, he went for it. I, it was shocking for me that he actually went for it, but I mean, he's a young guy. He just wants to make it exciting. What a start for the European Championships. And that putt was more downhill than it looked on screen there. That could have easily, if you airball that, that goes OB long. Yeah. Yeah, that was a little half run. Yeah. So this is for birdie. 
So this would be a perfect start for the young check. A bit low. Not really a bad start to have a par on the whole first hole. Yeah, we were playing in awesome conditions. We were actually teeing off at 9.50 in the morning, which me flying in from America, for me, in my inner clock was 4 a.m. So it was definitely yeah. a fun experience. Well, but the whole one was a wake-up call, no? <laughs> yeah, good round start with a bogey. This is a very exciting time at Discmania. What do you see here is our new production facility where we are making our new Discmania originals for disc golfers around the world. Previously, production of Discmania originals were under the powers of others. That led us to a situation multiple times where we couldn't deliver what you wanted or needed. Well, that power is now in our own hands, and we want to share that power with you. Currently, this machine is dedicated to run as many P2s as you and the disc golf community want. I promise you, it won't stop until the demand is fully met. All right, we're back on hole two. This is an uphill par four. It's not too long but it's pretty tricky with 169 meter length what do you have here simon yeah there's a couple different plays here the most common play will be a big high hyzer but you have to push pretty much 100 percent power here to get into the sweet spot right here where the drone is flying there is some funky routes if you go early right into the woods you can get a good scramble birdie from there but this whole plays real uphill and way longer than it looks yeah and i think Pretty much everybody knows that all the Europeans are crushers, right? Yeah, it, the sport has been booming here, of course, throughout the pandemic. And a lot of young kids coming from Finland all over Europe. And the technique that all these kids learn from such a young age, they just have the arm speed, they have the form, and they also have the confidence. Mm -hmm. And Jakub is showing just like that, I think feel like this is like one of the greater, greater shots you can have here. I was so impressed with him. First of all, I mean, we're basically the featured card, European Championships, and he's playing on his home turf. So stepping up like that and just crushing it. Also, he had this crazy snap, yeah, almost very like loud. a pop off the yeah. drive, which was really cool. Christian, a little too inside, right? Yeah, but it's kind of a good thing to be inside, like a hyzer flip oh, play. Yeah, he gets all the way up there. That he went through perfect. the through the threes on the left. Okay, so you're aiming for that high shot, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm one over par at this point, so I was like, come on, get it in the spot, just commit to your angle, get it up, because in practice I was short a couple times, but right out of my hand I knew that was gonna that yeah. was gonna get all the way up there, and that's a good spot. Textbook. Textbook. <laughs> so Knut went to the right, so is he now like facing that funky route? Yeah, so you can see there is a lot of trees and branches to deal with, but really there is always there's always more air than trees so there is going to be a way and he actually he found a little hyzer route here mm -hmm. he's going around the tree right by the basket so that that's a really nice play but obviously that's more like a luck where you land on the yeah, first shot you're definitely taking a gamble if you if you choose to go that way i know Knut didn't choose to go that way but he definitely made it work and he's real mm -hmm. inside circle one and that's a skip shot right on the circles edge so Jakub is having another putt for the birdie on this round and this is a basic sidearm skip shot right yeah that's kind of the play you can try to throw a mid-range or even a putter turn over here but that's of course much more touchy mm -hmm. so i'm just throwing my most overstable fairway driver right up there and just try to get it close and it needs to be a low because of that guardian tree on the right so you need to go pretty much go underneath it this is actually christian's third, third shot. shot yeah we missed the second shot he went uh, too low and now he is having a, a putt for par so this is Jakub for birdie Chooses the straddle putt, which is not seen too much in Europe. Right in the middle. I like his style. It's very compact and calm. I really like it too. He puts a lot of hyzer on his putts, which sometimes can lead to some spit out. So I'm a bit worried about that. But no, that one connected perfectly. Ooh, airballing. That, that's the 
what he was telling to you before the round. He is nervous. Well, yeah, early, early putting shenanigans there for Christian. Mm -hmm. And you're back to par. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. That's the bounce back stat, one of the most important stats in disc golf. Yep. After those bogeys, you want to bounce straight back and Knut, awesome birdie. Very sneaky birdie for Knut. Uh, oh. oh my. And Christian needs to get his putting <laughs> on track. It's Sometimes it helps to have something funny like that happen where you almost miss from... But you make it eventually. Exactly. Okay, hole three. This is the longest three hole of the whole course, part five, and over 300 meters. So explain me this. Yeah, it is on... The video doesn't do it justice on how slopey this park really is. It's a side slope off the tee, mm -hmm. then kind of over a little hill, down the down the hill all the way to this very fast skippy green. And mm -hmm. I love this hole because it's a roll for a backhand. It's a roller shot off the tee, and yeah. you can get into a sweet spot and attack for eagle if you get the perfect roller. And Knut with the roller looks a good angle. You need to be high right with the roller yeah and this is also a tricky shot because of the side slope from right to left you need to turn your disc over way more than you think because the disc is going to try to feed left 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 but you want to go right 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 mm -hmm. yeah that was a really good shot so almost perfect do we see another roller or air shot here he's going the roller too and yeah, he didn't quite turn that over enough. That's why it's going to be low left. Yeah, you see those trees on the right now. You don't want to be inside those. Yeah, being short of them is okay. That th from there, it's going to be two more layups and try to get a four. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to push over my DD3 as much as I can and almost have it land vertical. That's my goal, which I didn't quite achieve. Yeah, so you're going to be now by those trees which will obviously be a little difficult for the next shot. And what about those hay rolls? Yeah, yeah. I, I was confused. I wasn't sure if the tournament placed them there on purpose as kind of fun obstacles and kind of make it look cool, um, or if they were just left there by the people that were taking care of the park. Well, they are in some difficult places, so they are strategically there. Yeah. Christian goes, this is, this is looking good. He's on the high side of the hill. Maybe a little bit short, but he, he has was, it. Yeah. Christian was throwing a very uh, understable disc there, so he almost released that flat, and it just flipped and did all the work for him. But uh, sometimes rolling a really flippy disc like that, so understable, mm -hmm. it'll go too hard and too sharp to the right, and now he's ended up actually short yeah. in that tree. This is not good because uh, there's a long ways to go. He's going to go sidearm. Is it around that tree? No, he hit the tree and dropped down. Yeah, that was... That was definitely an unforced error. From there, you don't even try to have to get greedy. You just want to go to that sweet spot over to the right. So Knut has actually a very good angle to the green. A little low, but it's a smash. Yeah, from there, it's probably almost 600 feet down the hill. Oh, you see on the stick on the left, that's 50 meters. So he's like 25 out for the eagle. That's, that's insanely impressive. So now you see that those rollers that you and Jakub had are two left, so you need to navigate those trees and branches. So there is not really a way from there to the green, right? No, no, the, you're, you're so cut off and the angle you have to throw, you kind of have to go really wide and then getting the distance is just not possible. Mm -hmm. So you're basically playing for birdie here, no, right? Yes. Yeah, we just, my goal, I had actually a really tricky shot here. I actually just threw it hard towards wow. those branches, hoping to push through them, which it did. Um, and then I just, yeah, it all kind of funnels down towards the basket, and I actually hit the hay well nice, and I ended up right behind it. That could have been totally different if you had hit that branch and go way left, right? It was definitely a gamble shot. Okay, so Christian is leaving this for, is still for the birdie. I mean, if he makes the green... This course has lost a couple trees over the years, and that gap used to not be there. And Christian goes long there, but takes advantage of the new gap. And I think he's still outside the circle, outside the circle there. Mm -hmm. And this should be quite routine for Jakub. We're talking about like 80 meters, just the basic hyzer, right? The only tricky thing about the shot will be the elevation, the slope right to left. So he's hanging this way wide playing for the skip down and the curl and that is a, a very very good shot yeah. inside the circle so 
you have this. I have a hay bale to work with. Perfect trick shot. <laughs> yeah, just find your aiming point. I was aiming at those flags in the distance there, like 20 meters right of the basket, and just let it slide right there. And mm -hmm. happy to tap in another birdie. Is he looking for a opening for the birdie? Uh, eagle, yeah. He's oh, going he had for a it. couple gaps, and after a hot birdie birdie start, mm -hmm. oh, gave it a nice run. He definitely had the height and he had the will, but a little high. So Christian is pretty much blocked and he needs to settle for par. So this is for birdie. Strong start for Jakob, another birdie chance. Nice. Yeah, two yeah. under through three holes is not bad. And two strong putts in a row. I'm sure he's uh, feeling more and more confident. So I'm excited to see what he can do this round. And that's in for Turkey. Three under through three. Smoking so. hot start for Knud. I was, I was almost shocked. But yeah. also excited and happy, of course. Yeah. Yeah, Knud is currently the second highest rated player in Norway. So he's, he's a real gamer. Okay, this hole is actually a famous for Paul's hole in one from the World Tour 2016. Hole four is 109 meters, a little tricky hole, right? It used to be a big hyzer over those right big pine trees, but they have grown a bit over the last couple of years. So I'm not even trying to throw that shot anymore. And it's the straight shot. You need to throw a fair, maybe a mid range, but a, most people will throw a fairway driver, mm -hmm. a very straight, maybe slightly understable fairway driver to have it flip over to well, the right. Th that's a fairway driver for Newt. Yeah, that is a, that is almost very ideal. Nice. Yeah. Seven meters. It's a really cool hole. I really enjoyed this hole. It looks really nice. It's a great green setting. And mm -hmm. if you land in the spot where you want to land on the green where Knut just did, it's a little death putt, which kind of messes with your mindset. So Jakub was turning that driver a little bit over. So that's one thing you need to avoid. It's a very easy mistake to make because there's if you go way left, there's also going to be OB at the path. So you rather want to make this mistake where you kind of turn it over too much. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> then from there, it's just an easy tap You're not far. happy with that. This is one of the bonus birdie holes. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of more birdies to get later on in the round. So this is, I'm not too disappointed, even though that was a bit too yeah. far in the trees. And Christian, yeah. wow. That was a nice shot. He took a little wider, like an Anheuser route. Yeah, that's that's a really awesome play. It just looks so controlled and beautiful. And that's a layup, right? Yeah, yeah. We're not getting crazy. We're here on hole four, European Championships round one. We're not we're not trying to make the highlight reel just yet. Mm -hmm. Two layups and two birdie pots coming. So this is Knut here for four in a row. Okay. Heartbreaker. I was standing right behind him, and I thought that was in, but. It was one of those sneaky right, side. sneaky right side kind of... And turns over and flips out. Yeah, yeah. one of those flip outs. Yeah. So Christian really needs to have this. He's one over through three holes. And uh, this, is a, this is a course that you need to go under par a lot. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he doesn't have the highest expectations. He hasn't been playing huge tournaments over the last couple of years. Also, he's one of those guys he plays for fun because he loves the game. So he's just excited to be here. It's one of his first rounds on camera, so mm -hmm. yeah, that was a, a really cool birdie for Kristen, and now he has the box on hole five. And hole five is here. This is kind of a very different hole than any other hole, basically, on the course. Talk about it. This is a cool hole. It's a par four and there's two main different plays. You can go where the drone is going, like the wide route where you throw like a 100 meter straight shot down the hill and then 70, 80 meters up the hill back to the basket. Or you can choose a huge turnover, sky turnover, almost on a roller angle. And I've actually been in position sometimes putting for eagle here with a huge shot, mm -hmm. but then yeah, everything has to be perfect. So Christian is going for the left route, right? Yeah, he's throwing his FD, and we actually practice together as well. And That's long. He told me this is the shot, and he actually <laughs> bounces off the flag. Hit the feather flag. And but I think it, he was in, just yeah, it's in bounds. a couple feet away from, from the path, so he yeah. stayed in bounds. But he's in the tall 
it was still kind of wet outside too from the early morning. Yeah. And if you're down, way down there, that's actually a long second shot. He is way down there. He's so, going to have to throw a distance driver. Yeah, so most of the players are, are actually cutting the corner. I don't really know what Knut was. Is he, was he going for the I think the he just row? overturned that a bit. I'm pretty sure that was a mid-range. and. Yeah, he um, went for the straight and up. Okay. But Jakub is looking for the shortcut, right? Yeah, it looks like he has a he has a high speed driver in his hands, and if he's not playing the roller, then he's probably going a high turnover. Yeah. This is a very sensitive for the angle. You can't really, you know, it's very hard to film this shot. But yeah. here he goes. <coughs> so he's on the right side of the fairway in the middle. So that was kind of a little short. It's a good shot. He's in the fairway, which is yep. on this course. Being in the fairway is you're halfway there. And you must be looking for a very high shot here. Yeah, looking high into the sky. We had some birds fighting in the trees, and they were making crazy sounds, so that was a bit distracting. Also, I didn't want to hit them. Yeah, and here's another cloud breaker going. I said, that's perfect. It's flexing back, so it was a great shot, but... It left you pretty much on the very right side of the fairway, which is not bad because you're high. Yeah, no, it's I'm high. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a really good thing mm -hmm. to be up on, on the hill there to the right. That blue stick is 100 meters, so there is still 120 meters uphill, and Knut is going with the roller. He missed the green, and he's going to have a quite a tricky shot for the birdie. So here's where is Christian, so he's way down the road. Full power shot, mm -hmm. full reach back, trying to bomb it up the hill. And he pulled that one a bit. He told me that that footing there, he was on a little side slope in a little tall grass, and he said that was very yep. tricky. But and he's still like in circle too. Yeah, you can give it a little run from there. Again, you're working with a sloped green. Mm -hmm. What I love about this course, and I've said it a lot of times, but there's not a much OB to deal with or be scared of, so it's a full-on attacking course. Yeah, and sidearm from Jakub also a bit long there is actually an opening right in the into the tree so we don't see it yet but there there is a pot for those guys and you have a basic putter shot left yeah you can see i'm way up to the right which is perfect because it opens up all you got to do is miss this one big tree which i just got in front of i almost pulled it into the tree but that was a, a yep. textbook another tap and birdie for me to go 200 bar that's how you want your holes to go like there is no drama Low stress birdies are a very fun part of the game. Okay. We have a maybe 15, 18 meter putt for Knut. Oh, he hit the branch. I, you know what? I think he thought that was going in. It looked good. Yeah, it was looking online. I, that branch. Yeah. Jakub has a pretty similar look, but maybe a bit closer. So this is very potential birdie. Beautiful frame up here. Uh, low. Almost gave it a His chance. release is quite low and fast. Yeah, it's a fast little low hyzer snap. Christian choosing the layup. He does not want, no, he wants a no stress par, which mm -hmm. he's getting. And nice putt there for par for Knut. So you are the only birdie here. Solo birdies. The best feeling birdies in the game. So you get the box. Yeah, and we're about to face three pretty short par threes in a row, which is kind of like the birdie birdie or die kind of stretch of the course yeah and uh, having After the boxes those, it's, it's a long hole yeah but all of those holes have something you need to deal with for example i'll let you go with the with the whole presentation next oh thanks welcome to hole number six this is a downhill par three we have 377 feet actually it plays a lot shorter than that probably more like 250 um, you can even throw a putter there or a mid-range is probably the best choice because you don't want any big skips at a very fast green again. So ideal play is to land it about 20 to 30 feet short and have it slide right up there. Um, a forehand is another good option if you have a 300 foot forehand. But this is a mid-range and you're going to go straight, right? Yeah, this is the new Italian blend MD3, which I just got from you yesterday. So thanks for that one. You're welcome. You can have another one with these shots. 
That was a really nice shot. It was control all the way, exactly what you wanted. I love making it look easy when this is not a gimme. He's throwing pretty hard, so this must be a putter, right? I think this was a V-Rock, but I could be wrong. Okay, that was uh, pulled right and never came back. And I, th I think that we have, we're going to see three, uh, sorry, four backhands. And Knut is actually having a putter. He's a smasher, so he likes to throw hard pretty much on every shot. And here we go. That's also turning over, and that's not going to come back. So similar shot to Christian. They will have a long putt for birdie. I like the putter play here. I think it's sometimes nice to actually throw something harder instead of trying to really control and finesse mm -hmm. a faster disc. But, yeah, also Jakub's same mistake. This is kind of the mistake you make because leaving it short and left, first of all, the OB road comes into play, and it, it feels just kind of sad if you leave it short left. Yeah. So these are actually a quite an elevated or downslope putts. And he's not happy with no, that. No, Knut, I told him afterwards that was, oh, I said it right there, that was a half run. Never good. <laughs> These half runs are just, you got to commit or yeah, commit to the layup. I agree. This it's, was also a half run. Looked light. Yeah, on camera you can't really see it, but it is, it's kind of significantly downhill. And you can see again, Christian, after his first couple mm -hmm. missed putts, he like lost his confidence a bit and just chose this to lay up again, which that's a bold play. Yeah, you don't see that much. Oh, oh no. Yeah, putting is hard. It definitely can be. That's a good putt. Yeah. Those six to seven meter for par, those are always a bit stressful. So good connection by Knut, keeping his round going. Okay, so Jakub took a first bogey here. Yeah, probably not the hole he was envisioning no, yeah. to get a bogey on. And another stress-free birdie. Two solo birdies in a row. I feel like now I'm back in control. Mm -hmm. Tied, just tied up with Knut. And yeah, from here it's just game on. We're off to hole seven, and this is an uphill tunnel shot. And a new thing for this year is that they added those fences like 15 meters before the basket. Is there anything special here? Yeah, severely uphill. You got to throw, you want to throw a pretty fast disc here to make sure you get it all the way there and actually throw it with a lot of power. And you know, with power comes sometimes tricky accuracy. So it's a tight tunnel shot. Mm -hmm. And you got to you got to get it there because leaving it short again is no fun. Yeah, a little high left, and you're on the circle's edge. I think you have a pretty open look from there. Yeah, I ended up barely outside the circle, um, leaving me a level putt, which was kind of nice because I was pin high left. Mm -hmm. That made it a bit easier to attack the basket from there. And Kristen, I think, is throwing an FD. Night strike. That's to the right, but he, he, he goes through and he has an uphill putt from maybe 15 meters. It's definitely a very fair off the fairway because you can always get a bit lucky on this course and go through everything. I'm expecting Knut to go hard on this. Oh, yeah. little low. Little slip maybe off the tee and then that last branch knocked him just down enough to hit the, hit fence. the top, the very top of the fence. Uh, that just needed one extra inch, and it's way closer. Mm -hmm. And that is a high-speed driver on Jakub's hand, or at least a fairway. Great control. Looks Ooh. great power. Looks really good. That's perfect. That's I love they want. have the big log behind the basket as a backstop, too. And that's absolutely parked. Knut from the distance way downtown wow another one what a performance here early on he is on fire that was crazy okay christian he needs to go for this no layup <laughs> he's shown us a couple layups i think it's about to show us a good run here short left again he's yeah he's not having it today not so yet this is your third, yeah, and you made it a little left, but, you know, it's in 
three yeah. three in a row you're back on the, seat, the driving seat super stoked to uh connect with that one i had a little branch to work with and i had to like shoot it right underneath with a lot of spin mm -hmm. to keep it over the rim that kind of snuck in left side and Jakub has pretty routine five meter putt here the tap in and this is a bounce back oh, bounce back stat after the bogey you take the birdie that's that, important yeah that's that's the good player So suddenly you and Knut are a little off. You're, you know, you're four down through seven, which is okay. Solid, it's, yeah. it's good start. And we're on hole eight. This is uh, one of those, the last, uh, you know, sort par four, uh, threes and 90 meters. And what's the play here? I want to say this is the shortest hole on the course and it feels like it's just right there in front of you. A lot of sidearms are gonna be thrown here if you have the confidence. There's two trees to miss where you kind of, it's kind of a throw and hope that you don't hit them, but it's definitely a big enough gap to hit it more often than not, but. Why no I, sidearm? I'm not having the forehand game right now. I have no confidence in my sidearm, not really because of my injury, more because I haven't thrown a sidearm in two years. So I choose like the inside, the slight turnover and just kind of hope to get through those branches. Well, you did. And it slides up there beautifully. But you hit the branches pretty hard. I hit them, honestly, I hit it a bit harder than I was planning to. I wanted to throw it probably about two or three meters more over to the left. Mm. We're going to probably see three sidearms after this. It's an, Yeah, it's totally a sidearm hole. Get it low and skippy. And that's the tree you need. Oh, you just hit the last tree you can't, you can't hit in order to get to the green. Yeah, if you leave it short, you'll hit the pine tree. And like Knut just did, go a bit too long, you hit the big birch. I hope it's a birch. Yeah, it is. Another sidearm. This looks good. That looks absolutely perfect. Oh, barely misses the pine yeah. tree and the skip and roll. That's a bullseye. Bullseye connection. Perfect shot. And Christian with the sidearm. It's a warm day already. It's still early in the morning, but we were de dealing with some humidity. Hands are sweaty. And oh no that that can happen just leave it a bit short and then another c2 putt for him yeah this is this is like his fifth or sixth in a row i think he's been circle two putting almost every hole and that's oh. a miss release by a lot <laughs> what is the commentary here i think he was saying that was a poor effort my friend yeah it was okay knut not really a good he was he was under that branch and Christian, well, that was good for him. Yeah, he, he was outside that. the circle on this first putt and almost again outside the circle on his second putt after throwing a crazy air ball. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was great and hopefully gave him some confidence back. That's four in a row. Oh, yeah, I'm, I felt like kind of on cruise control here. I was so happy to get those three par threes in a row. And that putt was a bit scary. I almost wanted to spit out. What do you think when you have that kind of a putt? You don't think anything or you think something? I think my boss is watching. I better make it. <laughs> Okay, back to action. We're on hole nine, which is the last hole of the front nine. This is the longest par for 288 meters downhill. Please, what do we have? We have some hay bales in the fairway. So perfect drives can get a bit unlucky to end up right behind those ones, but it is a crusher. Heiser flip off the tee, and then you're left with a really fun, picturesque approach shot from around 100, maybe 120 meters. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite holes on the course. Yeah, I wanted to when I designed this course, I wanted to have a hole where you can really unleash whether you're righty or lefty. What kind of a shot is a good shot actually here? 
Yeah, so it seems like a big hyzer shot, but you actually want to throw something kind of almost straight to understable so you get the hyzer flip and then the late carry forward because you want to get far down there on my disc. I don't know if it was the wind. I was a bit confused why that just held straight. Yeah, I think it was the wind at the end because there was actually pretty windy on the tunnel when we walked down the hill. So yeah, this is uh, you need to get at least 150 meters off the tee, right? Yeah, it, it sounds like a really far shot, but it's it's so downhill that it's not, it's really you don't have to put that much effort into it. Mm -hmm. But it's just a really fun tee shot where you can just let it rip. So and that is a too much hyzer that ends up on the left side of the fairway and probably almost you know 200 meters. Yeah, Jakub is not going to be happy with that one. Okay, Knut is going a little bit wider. This actually looks pretty good. Yeah, Knut has a bit of a wild form there. He just puts his whole body, almost like James Conrad style, just all into it, which is <laughs> it's fun to watch. Full send. Yep. Yeah, but he had a hyzer all the way, so he didn't really gain those extra meters. Yeah, it's kind of the, the lower risk play. You're not even risking to go in the rough or something. And Christian, Christian finds the same tree that Jakub, but goes a little bit past. So those are actually not too bad because they are not inside the trees, but there are still long ways to go. Like you see, you can see here that the green is way down there. Yeah, left side of the fairway where these guys are. I mean, of course, you don't want to be this close to the trees, but left side is actually for right handers is actually the better spot to be because you can now throw a hyzer mm -hmm. or another hyzer flip towards the basket which is a lot easier than the right side okay. where you have to attack it dead straight so this was okay you can see the stick on the left that was 50 meters so Jakub is 40 meters out so that should be a routine par for him what are you thinking here I had a l I got a bit lucky that I had a little gap in the branches to uh, just attack it right at it the wind here was the most the strongest wind we've had all round, straight into our face, and I thought my disc was going to go much straighter because of the wind, but um, I guess I did kind of the overcorrection and... Pin high, 20 left, right? Yeah, I really didn't want to turn it over, so I guess I overcompensated. So Christian has a pretty similar shot than Jakub, but he's actually making the gap, so this looks good. That was as good as you could throw it. Christian has a good arm, too. He's been playing for a lot of years, and he was known in Germany back in the days as one of the furthest throwers. I actually checked. He's four-time podium finisher at the Deutsche Meisterschaft. <laughs> but Deutsche Meisterschaft. Yeah, German. He's, he's been a top top five German player for a long time. Okay, Knut finds that tree, guardian tree on the right, so he has 50 meters to the basket. Yeah, that was almost probably his most disappointing shot. He had nothing in the way there, and that was kind of just like an unforced yeah. error. And this is another error, mistake. It's like 12 meters short. I don't think he was thinking about having to save a par after that tee shot. No. And this is just the layup. Nicely done, no stress. That's yeah, this is a bonus birdie. This is almost a thousand foot par four. So if you get a three, you did a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're going for the th birdie, right? Yeah, I'm pin high left. I have really no, no OB to worry about or anything, so I thought I'd give it a little run, but I was a bit disappointed there that I had the perfect line, just didn't give it a chance. So this is to save par. And too high. Yeah, you don't want to make a mistake after that drive. If that's his first bogey of the round. Yeah, it was, and I mean, what a way to get the bogey. Three bad shots in a row, that's never good. Yeah. That concludes the front nine. I tap in. I'm five down. Knut's still solid. Four down. No, three down. Oh. <coughs> With the bogey. Right. And Jakub, Jakub three, three down. down. And Christian, very slow start. Yeah, he was playing a lot of layups, and I think he's okay not to be over par right now. Okay. Well, here you have it. This was the very first round of the European Championship 2021. It's so nice to be back with the Spin TV, and this is actually my first time I'm going to ever host the whole complete tournament as a commentator. So it will be a very fun week ahead. Thank you for watching, and of course, thank you, Simon, for joining us today. We're going to get a lot of more disc golf to come. See you on the back nine. See you on the back nine. International disc golf is back.